same gym. He goes to the same gym as Princess Diana. Well, I'm a... <laughs> November 1993. Now, all week this week, Gabby Roslin is away. Aww. Now, normally when Gabby is away, we have some pay limitation who attempts to stand in for her. But this week, oh no, it's all different because, of course, Gabby could never be replaced. But uh, this is as close as you can ever get to being as good as or as looking forward to a whole week as uh, we do when Gabby's around. Because this week, for five days, 7 till 9, Channel 4 on the Big Breakfast, Kim Wilde will be. Please give her a moment. Give her a moment. What? Give her a moment. We got all week, lads and girls. Okay. I'll be here every day this week for Gabby Roslin. On the right camera, love. I'll be here every day. <laughs> I've been here every day. I'll be here every day for Gabby Rosalind. That's Standing right, she will be. Yes, we're she will. looking forward to it a lot. Coming up on today's show, as well as Kim, uh, Old Misery Guts, Victor Meldry's in the bathroom with Zig and Zag. Don't miss wow. that, whatever you do. Adam Faith on the bed with Paula. And meet the pig who's sending shockwaves through the bacon breeding establishment. Wow. Plus, Ooh. plus James and the Velvet Underground, the Snap, Cackle and Pop. Your chance to win a week's skiing holiday for two in Austria at, at their peak. <laughs> And we break a major TV taboo by screening an ad for a funeral party. No way. Oh. Yes, but it's all true. Coming up on the show today, it's one minute past seven now, I think. I can't see the clock, but I think it is. And time for the news and weather with Peter. Chris and Kim. Peter, meet Kim. Kim, meet Hello, Peter. Kim. Hello, it's so nice to hear you say my name. <laughs> <laughs> well, whose name would you like me to use? Well, see, Pete, when we do the rehearsals uh, the week before for people when they stand in, we always use videotapes that you read in the news, and you always hand them back to Chris and Gabby, and it's terrible for the presenter, because you know, <laughs> it's the first time. Anyway, you sound like you've got a bit of a snuffle this I morning. do. Don't Thanks. talk about it. Come it's on, boring. blow your nose, blow your nose. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, you Chris. It's better. OK, oh. thanks very much, Pete. Uh, birthdays today on this Monday morning. Ken Dodd's got a birthday. Yay! He's 66 today. What a beautiful day to have a birthday. Happy birthday to Liz Dawn, who's 54. Happy birthday! Vera Duckworth in uh, Coronation Street, of course. Rupert the Bear's got a birthday. Oh. OK, Rob, OK. Uh, how old do you think Rupert is, Kim? Oh, I'm um, 73. He is 73. Oh, he doesn't look a day, does he? No, he's a bit grey on top, though. There you are. Cute. And finally, Gene Shrimpton is 50 years old today. Happy now, uh, Rob, what do you know about Gene Shrimpton? I know nothing about Gene Shrimpton. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, let, let's ask you a few questions. Uh, do you know what her nickname was, Gene Shrimpton? Uh, shrimp. The shrimp. <laughs> That's right. And what's she famous for? A model, film star? No, she launched a miniskirt at a fashion show in Australia one year. Really? Yeah. yeah. There you are. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and if it's your birthday today, call us now on 081 985 Or you can fax us on 081 985 And call should cost no more than 25p. That's right. No, 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 no. Not for this one. That's the 891 numbers. Oh. Oh. When I said you were good, you should have said thanks, Chris and Kay. That was God punishing you for <laughs> rebuffing that compliment. Coming up uh, on the show between now and nine, Victor Meldrew in the bathroom with Zig and Zag at half seven. Don't miss it. Very funny. Yes, yes, uh, we're we're going to get him to sing something. We're going to try and get him to sing a happy song, which is going to be yeah. difficult, but we hope we're going to do okay. it. And also, something else very important, uh, the most famous best-selling book of all time, the Bible, gets tabloid treatment. Ooh. Ooh. But at six minutes past seven, it's time to meet, meet the brand new family! Good morning and hi. We're the Kenny family from Notter Screen in Liverpool and I'm Joe and I'm married to a lovely wife called Christine and we've got five spiffing kids. There's Daniel, John... And here they are, the Kenny family from Norris Screen in Liverpool. So we're in Liverpool, yeah. So where exactly in, in Liverpool is that, Joe? Where exactly in Liverpool? Yeah. Um, it's it's <laughs> down by West Derby. It's it's sort of in the centre. So is it anywhere near my nan in Highton? Not too far away. Yes. Yeah. She's, uh, oh, hello, nan. Hello, <laughs> Lil. Hello, Lil. So, uh, Mum, have you have you always lived in Liverpool? Always. Yeah. All the family. Yeah. All the family. Yeah. Right. So, 
John, which one's John? You, oh, John. I'm, I notice you're wearing a different football. Hello. Hello. Me? <laughs> so I, I know we've just met, but... Uh, so I notice you're wearing different football <laughs> colours. Yeah, um, I know you're wearing uh, different football colours to your Dan Daniel. Which team do you support? Jean me. Jean me. Jean me and all this. So, um, hang on. Oh. Excuse me. So, aren't those two teams huge Hello? rivals? What happens at home? It's for you. What happens at home when the two teams are playing? Goo <laughs> goo. <laughs> uh, anyway, Dad, oh, I'll, I'll, I'll have a go at these later. I notice there isn't any tea and coffee on the table. Is there any reason for that? Yes. What's that? Breakfast television can't afford to pay for. No, 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 no. no. Is there another reason? No, we, we, we don't drink tea and coffee. Why's that? Because um, we're Mormons and uh, it's, it, the caffeine in it's bad for you. I think I'm dead. Hey. Hey. Oh. Hey. Uh, but hang on, so is there anything else that Mormons can't eat or drink? Well, we don't, we don't drink alcohol, we don't uh, take drugs, and um, otherwise, as long as you eat good food... But you, and, uh, can, but you can eat lots of bananas. Oh, you can eat bananas. And you can eat lots of apples. Yeah, someone like the maggot sauce. <laughs> well, thanks very much. We're going to be hearing a lot more about the Mormon faith a bit later on, but now at oh, be ten past seven, it's time for Fender Fender 500. Yeah. Ah, good morning. It's uh, Monday. It's um, 7.19. And um, the question about the clip was, what's the name of that little cartoon doggy? And the answer is Ace Hard. And he's the toughest mutt in Dog City. The big squeak <laughs> is out today. <laughs> and it's uh, 8.99. She said that as if she really believed it. He's the <laughs> toughest dog in the city. Today's a very special day for a man from Edmonton in North London because he's spending thousands of pounds having his Mercedes fixed after it was hit by a foot-wide block of urine which oh. fell 20,000 oh. feet from an airline flying above. No! <laughs> How did it stay together and why did it stay together? No. I've got no idea. Anyway, today's washing line uh, prize and all week this week is a fantastic prize. Here it is. It's a brand new CD kind of thing, uh, but it was, it's a fantastic photo CD player. Now, what does this mean? Well, it means that you can take a photograph with any camera and take it to a special place to be developed and they can print your photograph onto CD and you can show it on your television. It's the, like, 1993 version of the slide projector. Are you ready for this? Yep. Okay, I'll just put it on channel four. You're going to have to give me control of this up there in the, the, the visual place. There you are. Thank you very much indeed. <laughs> and that's me on the toilet, obviously. Now, if I press this, it should reveal something else for you there. Come on, when you're ready. There you are, you see? And then I've got another one. I've got another one. Me and my mate. Here we are. Go on, get back in there, Rob. Hey! Hey! Hey, now! Nobody told me about that, did they? That's a secret thing. OK, well, it's all right. It doesn't matter. It's a bit of a laugh. You can win that anyway today on the washing line game. And if you want to do that, then you telephone us on 0891 3311 And calls should cost no more than 25p. That is true. It's 7.21. Stand by. Victor Meldry's in the building. We've just heard. Yeah. And now uh, I'll just do this. And uh, uh, the headlines in the weather should appear right now. 7.40. Here's Kim. OK, thanks, Peter. And I'm here with Joe, the dad of the family of the week, and he's about to tell me a little bit more about being a Mormon. So, Joe, are the whole family Mormons? No, we are, we are at the moment, yeah. And were you yeah. born into it? Uh, no. So, so were, you, were you religious before? Um, no, I was an atheist before, actually. Really? Yeah. So, so why did you decide to convert into Mormon? Well, I think um, when um, the, the Mormon missionaries came around, and yeah. they, we invited them in our home and we spoke about... Um, the uh, discussions that they gave, and they convinced you how? Well, it was the it was the family values that they teach. Yes. And it was uh, you know they talked about looking after your body. Although I've got problems with mine at the moment, and it's weird. No. Late. It's gorgeous. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> but, uh, but it's this nice element of not smoking and drinking, and um, you know mm -hmm. having good so, food for your body, and, and mm -hmm. all, but mainly because of the commitment to the family, really. Yeah. Um, and that was. You know. So what's the conversion process? Well, they, they just, they come in, they, 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 yeah, you just have, just very relaxed chat, just like this, actually. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm a convenient. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, um, so how does the church fund itself, do you know? Well, the, the, the members themselves pay what they call a tithing towards the church, which, yeah. is, which is done in, in secret, if you like. Mm -hmm. uh, nobody knows, I don't know who pays their tithing, which is a tenth of your income. Right. Um, and we're all voluntary members, there's yes. no paid ministry. 
So the money goes towards, uh, you know, building of the church or helping people in need or, you know, buying books or whatever. But, I mean, obviously you, you must be aware that Mormons do have a reputation as being a bit strange to some people. I'm not <laughs> saying myself, but some strange people find it a bit strange. What would you say to that? Well, I suppose if, uh, if not drinking and smoking and looking after your family is strange, then we're strange. But, uh, yeah. but in this day and age, you know, I mean, we're, we're not strange. We okay. just... So I mean, we have good fun, we, we have super times when we're out and, okay. you know, we've got lots of friends who are not Mormons. Yes. So... So, so we can be mates then? Yeah, we're, we're good mates. <laughs> <laughs> OK, well now it's time to go upstairs to the bud in the bathroom for the crunch. Whoa! Yes, indeed he do! Thanks, little Ted. <laughs> uh, is, uh, thanks, Ted! OK, is, uh, have you ever met Kim Wilde and where? And uh, Layla Omer from Hearn Bay says, I met Kim Wilde three years ago at a Janet Jackson concert in Wembley. I sat in front of her. Uh, Melissa Evans in Walthamstow. I met Kim two months ago in the lingerie department of Littlewoods at Marble Arch. Ooh. We'll check that out later. Uh, and we won't ask her. We'll just have a look. Rebecca Thomas from Yorkshire. I met Kim last year on a great fondue night at the Val d'Isere Ski Resort <laughs> in France. How beautiful. 0819851111. Or you can fax us 0819852222. Uh, have you met Kim Wilde and where? I suppose you could phone up and say no. <laughs> and I'd have to read that out then, wouldn't I? It should be quite dull, but there you are. Uh, we're giving away this uh, fantastic CD. It's 7.41. Welcome back to the Big Breakfast on this Monday. I kill you, kill you, you can't do it. OK, question about the clip was, uh, what happened next? And the answer was he zapped himself onto a different channel. And that's an all-American family wind-up in TV hell when they get sucked into their television set. Stay tuned. Uh, it's out uh, to buy next week. Price $10.99. There you are. Wow. And still to come, the first ever TV ad for a funeral parlour. And Adam Faith tells Paula about his new album, his first for 20 years. By the oh. way, as you can see, Gabby Rosslyn's not here because Kim Wilde's here all week. Yeah! Cheer gets any louder. Uh, plus, in the next 20 minutes, the big pig who's bringing home the bacon for Britain, young post popsters James and old pros, the Velvet Underground in Snap, Cackle and Pop. And in just one minute's time, the best selling book of all time, The Bible, gets the tabloid treatment. But now at 7.42, it's time for the big breakfast news with Peter Smith. Top stories this morning. Here's Chris and Kim. Thank you very much, Peter Smith, on this Monday. And uh, now, here it is, the Bible gets the tabloid treatment. Behold the front page, that's what it's called. And let's have a look at some of the stories in here. The, uh, the Noah's Ark story described as floody hell. There you are. That's quite good, isn't it? And uh, gotcha. This is uh, David and Goliath. That's the report on that story. Uh, what else is going on here? Uh, giant whale ate my husband, claims Jonah's wife. More headlines. And, uh, the, of course, they've got their gossip reporters. Uh, this guy's name is Pierced Organ. And uh, he likes to be photographed with all the stars, like somebody else we all know. And here he is, buddies with the Buddha. There you are. And here you have mucking around with uh, Mohammed. But this is the best one because uh, he's mates with the Messiah there at the Last Supper. And there he is, just next to, uh, to the Messiah himself, just on his right. That's uh, Behold the Front Page. It was out last week, and it's a Bible kind of thing with a tabloid treatment. Uh, today's question of the day is, have you ever met Kim Wilde? Lots of phone calls, Kim. Yeah. Obviously, some we can't read out. <laughs> Lots you can't read out, yes. right? Yeah. Uh, but these are some of them. You can uh, you can confirm them or deny them. Yeah. Diane Colwell from Newport in Gwent. My dad, Dave Colwell, used to work with Marty Wilde. Oh, dad, yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, had to look after Kim once when she was a baby and she was very cute. Oh, that's oh. sweet. You can't remember that one, no. Obviously. No, because I was a baby. Too little. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Mark Coley from Hemel Hempstead. When Kim was seven, my dad fitted a carpet at her house. Uh -huh. I don't remember about this. Because uh -huh. you all remember our carpet. It's a big time in your life, a new carpet. Oh, at my house? Yeah. Hey, and, dear, uh, yes. And, only... and she cleaned out his toolbox for him. Do you remember that? Wow. Um, Whoa. not exactly that, but I do remember him putting on the carpet. Was the carpet nice? Was it was it very nice, yeah. Axminster? Uh, uh, it was kind of like a nice beige soft thing, yeah. It was How nice. beautiful, beautiful. Yeah. And finally for now, <laughs> Debbie Chater. <laughs> <laughs> Debbie Chater from Hertfordshire. About I eight... remember Debbie. Was it the kind that burns, burns you? Uh, Debbie Chater from <laughs> Hertfordshire. <laughs> about eight Shame. years ago, <laughs> I, I used to be a nanny for Roxanne yes, and Marty Jr. Did. Who are Roxanne Hi, and Debbie. Marty Jr.? Well, Roxanne's my sister. She's 14, hello, hon. And my brother, Marty, is 12. OK. Hello, And hon. Uh, I've actually seen Kim first thing in the morning, uh, Debbie says, without makeup. Blacky old hair. <laughs> <laughs> More calls, though, please. Mm. Uh, on Kim's history right now, revealed on your screen between now and 9 o'clock. OK, well, telephone us on 081-985-11111. But it's quarter to eight now. That's 7.45. And time to shout out for the first time today, as loud as we can. Where are you, Kim? We are here. 
I'm not there. But see, the proof is in the tasting, of course, as always. Uh, chief bacon tester on our show, anyway, is Kim Wilde. Here we are. Yay. Now, Kim, uh, down there I have a lot of sandwiches, some are from the new pig and the old pig. Yeah. But you don't know which sandwiches are from which. No. OK, no. let's blindfold you for no reason just at all. You're very kinky like that. No, other, other than Kim said, and I've got to set the record straight, I said, we don't need a blindfold. She said, no, but it's quite fun, isn't it? Yeah. So that's yeah. what you said. Yeah. So we're going to blindfold Kim for no reason oh. at all. Yeah. OK. Can you see? Yeah, no. no okay. Is it nice? Is it nice and soft? This material. <laughs> it's gorgeous, hon. Okay, that's good. Yeah. Okay, so uh, right, we have a new sandwich and an old sandwich. I'll put them on on both the same kind of bread because otherwise that would bias the opinion. So this is the new one and this is the old one, right? So this should taste better according to these two chefs. Let's just mix them up. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we'll give you, give you. It's very stupid, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, it is very stupid. I don't know which one's which anyway. <laughs> okay, I know, but I just thought I'd mix it up for the viewers at home. Okay. Mm. Okay. So there's there's your first sandwich. Okay. You got that one? Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, do you want to spit that out like a wine taster or swallow it? Oh, I'll spit it out. Okay. Good girl. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and uh, here's another one. Oh, I like that one. Well, that's the new pig. No. Yes. Really? There you are. That's Wow. Good, isn't it? Kim Wilde, the farmer's friend. Mm. So that's the new pig, <laughs> available in your shop soon. That's oh. good. Uh, but now it's time for some snap, cackle and pop. And it's mu music news. It's 7.54. Leave me one. <laughs> <laughs> OK, leave. That's the new bacon there that we're having. And uh, the music news, all of that in snap, cackle and pop. And I can't believe Meatloaf is still number one. It's a no, dreadful no. and dire song. We don't like it. Do you like it, Kim? I don't know. I didn't, I I didn't like it at first. I did this for her love. But I won't do that, cause I'm far too fat. I'm not making reference to meatloaf there, I'm just saying, you know, I'm a bit pudgy at the moment. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, today's question of the day mm. is have you ever met this lovely lady, Kim Wilde, and where? And Julie Spartling from Hertfordshire says, I've seen Kim all hot and sweaty mm -hmm. in her leotard last year when I was in her step aerobic class at Nebworth Sports Centre. Join now. Hi, Julie. <laughs> <laughs> and thanks for that one. It's nice. And Sarah Cressy from Burham says, My friend Kerry Shelton's dad changed Kim Wilde's nappy when she was a baby. Oh, oh thank you so oh, much. Big thank you for that big one. Thank you. More calls. Have you ever met Kim, Kim and where? 08195 to 1 to 1. Or fact is 08195. Still to come. Still to come on the show this morning, Paula gets a taste of the Plant Doctor's flower bedside manner. Ooh, uh, the first funeral advert. The first funeral advert to be screened on TV. Uh, but right now we've got to make tracks because if we don't go now, we can't come back. We can't. We want to come back, so we'll go. <laughs> run and run, viewers. You've been missing out on the shoelace game for the last hour. It's the big breakfast here with uh, Chris Evans and Kim Wiles with us all week. Yay! And Kim, what's on the show today? Oh, well, coming up on the show today, um, Adam Faith will be on the bed with Paula. Yay. And the plant doctor will be pruning Paula's herbaceous borders. Ooh. How lovely. Uh, plus, we'll be giving away a fantastic skiing holiday in our competition at their peak oh, to St. Anton hey. in Austria. Thank you, John. Uh, but now, for the first time and probably the last ever, Kim Wilde is going to be backed by, or Kim Wilde, as she's known in Switzerland, <laughs> aren't you, on Swiss TV, <laughs> and will be backed by the Big Breakfast crew on an a cappella version of her brand new single, In My Life. Kim and the crew, take okay. it away. OK, one, two, one, two, three, four. In, in my life. life. Everything is feeling good in my life, feeling like you know it should. In my life, can't you see it's understood? I'm feeling good with my life. Yeah. <laughs> wow, that was great, wasn't it? Stand by to see them on the Christmas top of the pops. But now, a singer himself, it has to be said, Peter Smith with the news and the weather. Here's Chris and Kim. Thank you very much, Peter Smith. Hello there. It's uh, three minutes past eight. It's Monday, the 8th of November, 1993. Kim's here all week. Yes! Yeah! It's too loud, boys. Too enthusiastic. Uh, let's have a look at the paper, shall we? Uh, now, all the papers full on the front pages of uh, the story about the photographs that you heard in the news that were printed in yesterday's Sunday Mirror. Outrageous photographs. The Today newspaper says, Outrage, Queen's Fury, on the, as those who preyed on Diana in her leotard are branded seedy little men. They are seedy little men, too. The Daily Mail, Diana Fury over Sneak's gym photo. <laughs> The mirror running scared, we love die. <laughs> well, what a sensible thing to print on a day like today, because that's what I'd do if I were them, because they could be in big trouble, as the Daily Express uh, says Diana to act on spy photos. Uh, she may well take the unprecedented action, as you heard in the news again, 
of uh, suing, uh, taking legal action over these photographs, has sued for breach of contract. Now, apparently it's reported that the guy who owns the gym, who took the photographs, who also said in yesterday's papers, well, she's got to expect things like this. Not when she joins your gym for privacy purposes, she hasn't. Um, now, apparently he got paid £120,000 for these photographs. Well, if she does sue him, he's going to need a lot more than that. Yeah, because it's that. reported that she could, uh, well, earn over a million pounds in damages from him. And I, for one, hope she goes and takes that action. Yeah. Yeah. Because that is a seedy thing to do, what he did. Now, uh, what's happening in the papers? Oh, this is terrible. Four British climbers have been fined £67,000 for scaling Everest without a licence. You can't do it unless you've got a licence. But where do you take your test? That's what I want to know. <laughs> what else is going on? A surgeon. That was funny, that, wasn't it? That was funny. Uh, that's funny, that wasn't it? Yeah, it was quite funny. Apparently, you like my sense of humour. It's in the Daily Mirror so. today. Does it really? Yeah. Well, I didn't know we were in the Daily Mirror today. Yeah, we are in the Daily Mirror. Are we? Mm. Cool. Anyway, oh. uh, a surgeon has been flooded with thousands of calls after perfecting an operation which can enlarge a penis by at least 50%. Oh. Oh, wow. Dr. Robert Stubbs, who's 57, says his op is the first one to really work using the hidden portion of uh, the organ inside a man's body. Now, this oh. is... This is how he does it, right? He makes, he says, I make an incision, pull out material and tissue, oh, no. and, gra and graft it onto the member. This way, there is less chance of uh, rejection or infection, but more chance of a word that rhymes with that. Now, <laughs> Dr. S Dr. Stubbs of Toronto, Canada, has a six-month waiting list, or is it 12? Who knows? And uh, patients are tested to see if they want the op for the right reasons, quote unquote. <laughs> and women who beg him to help their men are turned away, but surely that is the right reason, isn't it? Ooh. What other reason? Make your jeans fit? I don't think so. It's six minutes past eight. That's the news today, or at least the news I decided to look at. Uh, today's question of the day is, have you ever met Kim Wilder where? Okay, well, Mauna McKinney from Perth says, I met Kim on a remote tropical island called Koh Tao in Thailand last spring, which she did. did you, do you remember? I do remember, yeah. Because yeah, I was only under for a few days. Yeah. And um, Alan Barker from Enfield says, I met Kim six years ago in Hammersmith at the Banana Armour concert where I got her autograph, but she stole my pen. Sorry. Oh, oh, oh. I'm very sorry about that. It does. Kelly Price from Nebworth says, I met Kim Wilde about 10 years ago at Reflections Nightclub in Hitchin. Oh, Whoa! Hey. <laughs> what were you doing there? Um, I was, apparently, I was offering um, her a cigarette. <laughs> really? I don't remember that. Oh, I was, yeah, I suppose I was smoking then. Bad habit. Have you stopped now? I have, certainly. Okay, and you've grown so much taller since. Absolutely. <laughs> 081985 <laughs> 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 If you, want, uh, if you can tell us where you met Ken Wilde. Where and, you met me, exactly. And when it was and what you did when Nothing you met. Nothing too lurid. And uh, what and time you left. I know there's plenty of those situations. Is there really? No, 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 no. No, there is not. I'm no, sure it's really. not. No. Seven minutes past eight and we've got another skiing holiday up for grabs in St Anton in Austria. Good another Blade Alliance <laughs> skiing, uh, skiing holiday. And what do you have to do on this competition? Do you know? Well, I think you have to phone up, don't you? And then yeah. you have to identify who's behind the goggles. And then if you get that, you get this ski holiday, right? Well, no, you get, then you get asked a question once you get oh, through. And you, if you oh, get that right, you get the ski oh, holiday. All right, then you, yeah. Uh, but the most important thing for now is identifying the person behind the goggles. Absolutely. Who... Uh, and <laughs> <laughs> the mind, the mind boggles. boggles. Who is behind that? That's right, that's the question. I get it right. <laughs> so difficult. Who was that behind the goggles? Paula's got the number. Go on, Paula. The number is 0891 And the call should cost no more than 25 p. Kim, Paula, Paula, Kim. I know, we Paula. know each other. Working yeah. colleagues now, though. We are, we're virtually intimate. Do you like you each other? Yes, we do. Years ago, do you remember, like, yes, really about years ago? And she had these great tights ago. on, you know, those sort of black ones with those sort of, like, made of lace? Oh, I yeah. Oh, do you remember? Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> I've heard you've got a very good week lined up. I have, I've got a fantastic week. <laughs> no, I have. Tell us about your week. Tell me you've got, and I've got a fantastic week. I've got, tomorrow I've got Richard Bryars wow. in Medley. Hey. Oh, he's so cute. Sylvester Stallone. Yeah. Wait, on Wednesday? Thursday. Thursday, Thursday. Yes. yes! Cindy Lauper on Friday. No way! Oh. <laughs> Cindy Lauper's new single is fab. Uh, but who have you got today? Today I'm going to be on the bed with Adam Faith, and I'm oh, also cool. going to be out in the garden with the plant doctor who's going to be telling us all about what to do about pruning. We can't wait. I can't wait. It's no, a great I show can't. today, isn't it? It's nice. We've got a nice thing going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lovely, beautiful yeah. thing. Oh, but let's not remember past friends. Oh. <laughs> it's nine minutes past eight now. Coming up in three minutes' time, uh, the first funeral ad ever to be screened on British television. Kim's going to find out about it. It's not a wind-up, it's a genuine thing. That's after uh, we shout for the second time today at nine minutes past eight. Please, as loud as we can. Hello, you've got to get ready to go to this now. Oh. Thank you very much indeed. I think they're getting ready to go to that now. Uh, we'll just shout out. Where are you, Keith? Special, is that right? The house. See you later. See you later, mate. Thanks, Keith.
Thank you. Thanks, Keith. And tonight, a major TV taboo will be broken when, for the very first time, a funeral parlour will advertise its services on British television. Funeral director David B. Hendry, who made the advert, hopes it will lead others to do the same. So, Mr. Hendry, why have funerals not been on, on uh, TV and advertised until now? I think traditionally um, funeral directors have been in a situation of hiding their services because of the fact that the public don't want to talk about it, yeah. don't really want to know about it until they need it. That's it. So what, what's made you decide to take the plunge? Well, Kim, would you know who to go to if someone, no. God forbid, died in a family? No. So there done. must be some way of putting this across to people who can offer the service. Absolutely. So are there rules and regulations about what you can and, and can't show in the commercials that you're going to make? <laughs> a lot of the rules are self-governing, what you feel yourself and what's right and what's wrong. And um, adverts have to be in good taste, obviously, Absolutely. and not offensive. Yeah, so you, you couldn't have a funeral director saying, uh, I'm Joe Bloggs and I'll give you a funeral you'll never forget. No, no, exactly. no. <laughs> you couldn't really have that, could you? Yeah. <laughs> OK, so what about ethics? <laughs> Sorry about that. Sorry. Um, so what about, um, what about ethics and advertising? Are you allowed to drop famous names you've buried? We, oh. we wouldn't want to do that because no. we've got a situation of client confidentiality that we wouldn't want to break. Okay. So we wouldn't use anything like that. No, of course. OK, well, let's have a sneak preview of the advertisement that will make its de debut on Grampian TV in Scotland tonight. Here it is. Everything went so smoothly. I couldn't have handled it otherwise. And as for support and kindness, I couldn't have asked for more. David B. Henry, funeral directors, offer a professional, caring service and peace of mind during times of grief. David B. Henry, funeral directors, Perth and Dundee. Wow, what an experience. So it looks like a cross between a life insurance commercial and an Andrex ad. I mean, why did you go for that sort of imagery? I think that we had to have something that wasn't too, too offensive, reasonably professional and um, not a staring, glaring funeral. Yeah. Um, had I, something that would catch the imagination, let people see it, they would wonder what it was, and by the time it's halfway through and they realise what it is, they're already watching. That's right. Rather than someone running and putting the television off because so, it's about funeral. OK, so... Um, I, th I see, I think we're going to wind up this interview now. So thanks very much for talking to us, and we wish you all the very best with your TV campaign. And now it's time for some hints. <laughs> That tip on my eyebrows, but uh, you, you, you did a major job on your eyebrows, actually. I saw that when you came in this morning. Very different from Friday. Oh, you're joking. Oh, come on. When, you, when did you do them? What, you mean they're different to Fridays? They've gone all thin on the edges. Well, they were, I thought they looked the same as Fridays. Uh, we, we, so, but did you do them over the weekend? No, I didn't. It's actually makeup. Oh, Chris. all right then. OK, Kim. <laughs> See, even when you're close when Kim, she still looks Hey, but I, I'm having my hair done today, though. And <laughs> I will, my hair will look a slightly different colour tomorrow. Really? It will. Blonde or, or dark? It will be a little bit blonder. Mine will be shorter tomorrow. Will it really? Probably crop today, yeah. So. It's uh, quarter past eight. What did you do over this weekend? Good weekend? Um, well, weekend? I did have it. I had a pretty good weekend. It was my brother's birthday. Rick had a birthday. He was oh. 32. Happy birthday, Han. It's my big brother. Right. I have a little brother, too. And we went to his <laughs> party. And then I, like, crashed out Sunday because I was so tired. Believe this. So tired. I don't believe it. Do you know what I did on Saturday? What? Went to my brother's birthday. Party. No. Do you know what I did yesterday? What? Crashed. Crashed. It was so Honestly, tired. Honestly, it's true. Oh, I'm not making up. It's completely true. <laughs> and people around here can vouch for because you know. But on Friday, on Saturday rather, when I got back from my brother's, there was an explosion at a warehouse over the road from our house, and I was first on the scene before the police yeah. and the fire brigade. Yeah. <laughs> it was great. It's been then, nosy then. Uh, no, well I was, but it was Aww. a big fire. I've never seen a proper fire before. I know you shouldn't sort of gloat on these things. No, you shouldn't. But uh, then, uh, then. There was this big tank next to where the thing had gone up in the first place. I thought, like, what if it explodes again? So I started running away from the scene, and then I thought, <laughs> oh no, what if they think I did it? Because the police guy. It was a nightmare. So I was really scared, paralyzed, and, and that was about 12 o'clock. Oh, uh, yeah. And then yesterday I went shopping at Safeway. Oh, I went shopping yesterday. You did? No, I went to Tesco's. No way! Oh, I did. I had to get some cat food because my little cat. Did you have a gas leak outside your, your supermarket? Uh, no. I had a gas leak. I had to go all the way around. And you know, it smells of gas. You know, gas smells. Yeah, terrible. But you know, it doesn't really smell. Do you know they put that in so you know when there's a gas leak? Oh. Gas, really? gas naturally doesn't smell. Oh, well, there you go. Well, ours well, doesn't, of course, that. and Kim's doesn't. <laughs> Gabby, no, Gabby's doesn't, does it? No. No, no. 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 mine doesn't. Either. But can I just say a tip as well? I, I want to do a tip. If you ever go sort of further away from where you live and you buy a newspaper uh, on the way back home, 
it's a nightmare because I, I put my feet up to watch telly last night. Mm, right? Mm. I was putting my feet up to watch telly. Mm. Everybody does. That's why I say put your feet down because put them up. That's <laughs> and uh, I was reading the paper. Really went to the telly page, and of course I got like HTV West telly's page. <laughs> so I didn't have a clue what was on television. So if you do buy a, tele a, a paper on the way back from a trip, make sure you get another telly page from another newspaper. Otherwise, you're lost at night time, and you've got to phone your mum up like I did. Which no, doesn't help at all because she lives in the northwest. Sorry, anyway, there. What a complicated weekend. Cheers, mate. <laughs> anyway, it's eight seventeen. Oh. <laughs> hey. Anyway, um, all right. Coming up, Adam Faith will tell Paula about his new single, his first in twenty years, and we give you the chance to win a sought-after skiing holiday in Austria. Oh, oh absolutely. But now we have a question about the clip. But first, the question about the clip is: Why won't the rocket take off? But remember, but remember don't fall. No, 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 this is brilliant. And the question about the clip was, why... <laughs> but, uh, hello? Uh, hello, the, Rob. <laughs> why wouldn't the rocket take off? And the answer was because they'd left the handbrake on. Uh -oh. And that was a clip from A Grand Day Out, a delightful film starring Wallace the Inventor and his dog, Gomet. Is it Gomet? Gomet. And it's out to buy now, price eight ninety nine. Okay, and if you've got to spend nine pounds and you're gonna buy a video over the next five years, buy that one because it's the funniest thing you'll ever see. Uh, coming up on the show before nine o'clock, we have the genuine smell of Michael Jackson. Oh yes, it's Woo! true. If you haven't smelt it before, smell it here right now. <laughs> and uh, also, very soon indeed, why there was standing room only at the birth of Christine, and that's little Christine there, the youngest daughter from our family of the week. All the truth, the story, and the intrigue revealed. But now at 8.22. And it's time for the news of Peter Smith. 8.23, we're back at 8.40. Here's Chris and Kim. Thanks very much, uh, Peter. Uh, you know, today's next question is all about um, whether you've met Kim Wilde or not. Yes. Have you ever met anybody famous when you were a little lad? You Never, know? ever. Never? Sad life, oh. really. Oh. What, not even when you were little? You saw no, something... I don't remember seeing it. I once was sent to get an autograph of a cricketer who turned out to be not famous at all. So that's <laughs> truly embarrassing. Who should it have been? <laughs> I've no idea. <laughs> you can't remember anything, really, no. can you? Last year. <laughs> OK, there you are. It's Peter Smith, uh, memory one. 8.23, it's Monday. Uh, today's question, as we say, have, of the day, is have you ever met Kim Wilde and where? And uh, Victoria Lee in Kent. I said hello to Kim Wilde last week. Oh. Very recent. Yeah. At Rackham's department store in Birmingham. Oh, yeah. I was there, yeah. <laughs> she was uh... looking around the women's clothes section. Oh. Is that right? No, no, that's, what, that's probably why I was doing my signing for my album. OK, clothes in a department store. Don't go there, Kim. No? <laughs> that's for size 18s like me. Oh, that's not nice. But true. Johnny Hook from uh, Johnny Pot rather from Hull. I looked after Kim in 1964 while her dad was on the five o'clock kids show. Uh, I was bouncing her on my lap when she suddenly peed all over me. <laughs> <laughs> it's true, apparently. Uh, Michael Cook from Chesterfield. I delivered a load of bricks to Kim's house just six weeks ago. He did. And she gave me a photograph. He did. He was great, actually. He really helped me out. Because they sent the wrong ones initially, you remember, oh, don't you? Oh, no. You didn't get the happy. wrong bricks, did you? Yeah, the oh, wrong no. size. You don't want them, do you? Oh, oh, you can't oh, do anything oh. like that. Uh, more sorry. of those calls, please. Here's the numbers. <laughs> Oh, and the numbers are 089 and the fact is 081985 If you've met Kim, we want to know when and where. And any second now, a mystery star will suddenly ski into view. So first call us and say who you think they are. And if you're one of the five lucky calls who get through, you'll have to answer a question about the star. And get it right, and you're as good as on the piste already. That's right, it's time to play at their peak. Another skiing holiday in St. Anton to give away. So have a quick look here, a careful look. The mind boggles. Who's behind the goggles? Yes. Who's that then? That's difficult, isn't it? Yeah, I've got no idea. Call us if you think you know. Call us on 0891 33 Of course you cost no more than 25. Okay, now I just need to ask some people upstairs, are we five seconds on this or not? Good. It's 826 <laughs> now. And uh, time to shout for the third time today, where are you, Keith? I'm in Preston. Keith and more of him tomorrow. Well, I'm here with Joe and Christine, mum and dad of our family of the week who've had a fair few adventures together. Now, Christine, we'll start with you. What, you had your last baby at home, so was that planned? Um, not exactly. We planned to just have a short stay in hospital. But um, she arrived rather unexpectedly. I got up in the middle of the night thinking I was just a bit uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. And sort of, you know, strutted around. Is this, is this your little, this is your youngest this is, Christine, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, Chris, she's eight now. Yeah. Uh, got up in the middle of the night thinking I was just a bit uncomfortable mm -hmm. and strutted around for a bit and um, Thought, oh gosh, I'm in labour. Yeah. Thought, I'll make a drink and, you know, in a couple of hours I'll wake Joe. 
But in the process of making a drink, of course, I realised this is real labour, yeah. you know, I mean, this yeah. was heavy labour. So what did Joe so, do? Was he just... Well, he was still asleep at this point. Oh, no. <laughs> He's I went to him and said, you know, Joe, I'm, I'm, we're having the baby now, Joe, you know, yeah. can you get up and a uh, bit groggy, you know. Yeah. But eventually persuades him out of bed. And that, by that time, like, the birth was imminent. And I mean imminent. So you were, having, sort of, you were having the baby in the actually, house? Yeah, having the baby. Oh, and I knew I was having the baby and there was no, uh, no dispute in the fact. Yeah. But I couldn't get that through to Joe because no. he was like, don't panic, Chris, you know, plenty of time, been through this before, <laughs> routine, oh, you no. know? So, and, what, uh, so what about a midwife? Did you call a midwife? Well, he was supposed to go out and phone a midwife. He, he actually went out, like, we didn't actually have a home phone. Mm. He went out and phoned a midwife and came back and, you know, you know, I was holding my breath, yeah. you know, I mean, I did not want this bed. And um, he was saying, don't panic, I'll run up and get changed, you know, and I'm saying, no, Joe, I'm having the baby now, Joe, now, Joe, <laughs> now. But he said, no, I'll go up and get changed. And uh, as he got halfway oh, up Joe. the stairs, halfway up the <laughs> stairs, he... We had a gang of kids with us at the time as well. So I was, you know, really, so you had your hands coming down anyway. the stairs, yeah. I so where did you actually have the baby in the end? In the living room. In the living room? Oh, yeah. And, yeah. and were you helping that with the umbilical the cord and all that stuff? <laughs> Ian, Ian Bolton would have been oh. proud of me. He was catching the year. So you've obviously been through an awful lot together. So how old were you when you met? Uh, 16. 16, yeah. Oh, 16. That's, oh it's weird. Did you fall Sweetheart. in love straight away? <laughs> I did, yeah. Oh. And then I had to marry Chris then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What was the wedding like? Very romantic. Wow, oh, you were 16 yeah. when you got married. Did you get married no, we were shortly 20. after? No, 20, no, 20 no. when you got married, yeah. I think. And uh, what was your engagement ring like? Didn't have one. You didn't poor. have an engagement no, ring? We, and we, did we, you have a honeymoon? No. You didn't have didn't. a honeymoon? So, so, Joe, isn't it about time we put all this to rights? Yes, it is. And this isn't re ears for you, is So, what have we got here? As I've saved up all my <laughs> pennies. And, uh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> it's so sweet. And, uh, how many years is it now? Oh, 17. Well, oh. Sure. well you've got 17. So after 17 no years, way. we've got... What was it you wanted if, you'd, if I'd have been able to buy you an engagement ring? I don't know. I can't, I've never thought about it. Oh, oh a oh, ring. Oh. So it's sweet. Oh. And just to make things complete, we're going to send you off on a fabulous honeymoon four-star <laughs> weekend at Fort Heritage's Old England Hotel in Windermere. Oh. So isn't that romantic? Oh, you're going to have your honeymoon, you're going to get your ring, you're going to get the everything. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, that's lovely. Hold on, do we get a kiss? Do we get a kiss? Oh, no, 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 in the middle with you is a track from Midnight Postcard, Adam Face's first album for 20 years. Wow. Wow. And he'll be stuck in the middle with Paula in bed in a few minutes and also the plant doctor's coming up. And now it's time for the news. Sheila Ferguson <laughs> from the Three Degrees. She's a nightmare. She's just pinned me down outside. Oh, oh yeah. To well, fight her off. Dream on, Chris. Oh, no, dream it's on. Oh, no, we believe well, anything about I clear. said. You Pardon? said that about Claire the other day. She said touching you up. She wasn't. You were touching her up, yeah. she told me. Yeah. 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 Look at him smirk. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the news now with Peter. Four nine. Here's Chris and Kim. Thanks very much, Pete. Uh, today's question of the day is, have you ever met Kim Wilde and where? And Paul, thanks a lot. And Paul Amos from Watford, I fitted Kim Wilde's very expensive kitchen, but she decided she hated it and painted it green. This is so true. When was that then? It was about three years ago and I moved in and it was this like, really horrible wood and I just thought, nah. <laughs> it's it's not, not right. right. Not right, so I painted it green and okay. it just looks gorgeous. Uh, Frank Humphreys from Staffordshire, and this is my favourite, you'd like this one everybody. Yeah. Uh, I met Kim a couple of years ago at Keele University and she sang the tea song. Why don't you ask her to sing it to you? What's the tea song? The tea song, Kill, uh, Kill University. Do you remember the tea song? I think you're telling fibs. Call us again. Yeah. Call us again, Frank. I know 81985111. Is she trying to sneak out of it, or are you, in fact, telling fibs? Yeah, uh, we want to know. It's 8.44 now. What are we doing? Oh, well, I think we're going to see Paula, and she's um, talking to a gardener. Uh, no, she's not. She's talking to Adam. She's not, is she? <laughs> yes. Oh, Adam. Adam, upstairs. <laughs> What? She said he was a gardener. Just now, Kim Wilde said that you were a gardener, as well as everything else Where you've been good at. Gardener? Well, it says here that you've been a pop star, a TV star, a financial whiz. Who 
Mm, and the question about the clip was, will he marry her? Um, and the answer is gladly, but he fears his ankles twisted. <laughs> <laughs> there you are. That's a, a clip from something that I'm sure is very good. Uh, yeah. It's Orlando, apparently. And it's out on video uh, sometime. Uh, Jim Maxwell from Folkestone <laughs> has called in uh, to our answer to the question today. Um, have you ever met Kim Wilde and where? I met Kim Wilde about four years ago when I worked for Sealing. She was going to Ostend with her band. Yeah. Somewhere you go very often, don't you, really? Yeah, my now, rock and roll tour. We've got that bloke Frank on the phone. Frank, are you there? Yes. Uh, Frank called in to say that he met Kim Wilde at Keele University and she sang on stage the tea song. Uh, now, Kim uh, d disclaims all knowledge of this. Frank, tell us more about it. Well, Kim was at Keele University doing a, a, a gig in front of the students and uh, she kept getting shouted to do this little song which she kept doing over and over and over again. It's called the Tea Song? I think it was called the Tea Song. It could have been called something else, but it no. was a, a little two-minute long... OK. Not only does Kim deny uh, ha ever having met you, your family or anybody to do with you, <laughs> uh, and also the singing of this song, but she also has never been to Keele University. You got me confused with someone else, haven't you? No, no, you were, you'd done the Mike Lloyd productions there. No, you, have, you definitely have got me confused with someone else. Are you sure it wasn't Madonna? You got a bit confused. <laughs> OK, well, look, we're going to research this. We'll find out more about it today. We'll put a top research team on it. Val? Yeah. OK, it's all right. I think it was Arthur Kitt. OK, well, you <laughs> find out today, though. All right? Okay. Good on you, Tia. It's 8.54 now, and it is time for the plant expert this time, isn't it? Is it really? I think Paul is going to go and talk to a plant expert. That's right. Yes. Lucky her. Well, we think it wasn't Kim. We think it was Sam Brown. That's what we think out here. <laughs> The health report will warn of a smoking epidemic. David Bellamy campaigns against privatising the Forestry Commission. And an environmentally friendly electric police car is tested in Leeds. That's it. We'll see you tomorrow. Here's everyone at the house. Thank you very much, Peter Smith. Here we are, all at the house. Stop chatting, please. Thank you. Oh, we've only got ten the seconds air. left. I can't believe it. We're going to have a chat then. On tomorrow's show, Lenny Henry, Richard Price, Invention Corner, Lesbian, Place, Invention Corner. That's it. We've got to go. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.